morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to spend today's update taking a look and recapping on the severe thunderstorms that tore through New South Wales yesterday and the torrential rainfall that occurred across New South Wales and parts of Victoria. We've got some more thunderstorms on the radar for parts of southeastern Queensland. We're also going to touch on a bit of a tropical weather update as well and just do a general weather forecast around Australia, a bit more of a tamer forecast update compared to recent ones. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support lately has been much appreciated. Now, we're going to start things off by taking a look at the archived radar and satellite imagery at midday local time across parts of New South Wales. Now it is a little bit hazy on here, it's a lot of data that windy.com is processing right now, but this archive uh, radar imagery tool is amazing and we're going to spend the next couple of minutes just archiving on what actually happened throughout the course of yesterday. So you can see that around 1pm the storm started to fire up around the Hillston and Griffith sort of area. Keep an eye on this cloud here and also this cloud here up at White Cliffs. These ones became very strong very quickly. Now unfortunately the radar that I was most interested in watching yesterday, the one outside of Burke, was closed. I believe that it was doing scheduled maintenance by the Bureau of Meteorology. What a good time of the year to do scheduled maintenance when we need every radar up in the part, northern parts of New South Wales to track severe thunderstorms like this. However, we didn't have radar data, which was just really unfortunate because these storms, especially across the northern parts of New South Wales, were intense and they were unfortunately well and truly out of range of the radar uh, around the Dubbo and Cobar area and then the radar down at Griffith as well. It just can't reach up there. But yeah, we had some very good storms, especially earlier on in the afternoon at around 2 p.m., which is what we're looking at right now. Some big thunder cells were sweeping across interior parts of New South Wales with some very heavy rainfall. Uh, fortunately, we didn't see any real hook echoes take place here. No supercellular thunderstorms, at least none long lived enough to produce tornadoes. And I haven't cited any tornado reports either, neither in my comment section or on Facebook. Normally the two best places to get storm reports uh, these days for New South Wales weather. This thunderstorm up here, the one that I'm talking about outside of radar range, I would have loved to have seen this on radar. This is a true monster of a thunderstorm up here. And for those of you outside of Burke, if you did experience this thunderstorm here, just immediately to the south of the uh, town, I would love to hear what it was like because this one here looks to be really strong. It continued to blow up as well right through into the early afternoon and the evening hours. This is it at about 6 p.m. local time as well, moving into the northeastern side of New South Wales around the Walgett and Lightning Ridge sort of area. And you can see, again, even considering that these storms are out of radar range, they're producing some pretty intense rainfall rates at some places, which means that we do have some intense thunderstorms on our hands here. And behind it as well, more thunderstorms blew up exactly how the forecast suggested it, and they continued well and truly late into the night at around 9 or 10 p.m. when they did finally start to ease off Tari, getting storms at around 11 or 12 uh, a.m. in fact this morning, and then up towards Grafton and Yamba, some storms blew through again earlier this morning. Uh, very intense rainfall rates up there as well, apparently earlier on this morning. It was very brief, but still some very good rainfall accumulations were reported. Sydney as well received a bit of a storm front blowing through at around uh, 7.30 or 8 p.m., depending about on whereabouts you were uh, in Sydney. And again, there were some good rainfall accumulations there up towards 15 to 25 millimetres. All in all, it played out pretty much exactly how the forecast suggested, albeit some of these storms were a little bit weaker than expected. They blew up really quickly and didn't have the uh, time necessarily to dump those large hailstones. They just blew up and turned into a bit of a squall line, especially into the more central parts of New South Wales. Uh, but yeah, we did certainly have some strong cells up towards Lightning Ridge, Walgett and Burke. So I'd be very interested to hear what they were in the comments section down below if you've got information on them. They did look like some gnarly cells up there. And also, just to finish off uh, the recap section, we had some heavy rainfall and some storms as well uh, along the uh, New South Wales and Victoria border, specifically outside of the Great Dividing Range and some of the high peaks around the Kosciuszko National Park. We had some very good rainfall accumulations there. A storm front blowing through at about 4 p.m. into the Capital Territory through Canberra, some good rainfall accumulations up towards 30 millimetres reported there, very healthy indeed. But peak rainfall accumulations just outside of Cabramara, 130 millimetres. Now, the majority of that was from steady rain full throughout the course of the morning and the afternoon. Some of those higher elevations just had rain pretty much all day, but that is still a lot of rainfall and about two and a half times what we were actually expecting from this weather system. So some substantial rainfall accumulations there, and thankfully we haven't woken up to any flooding. You can see later on in the evening, the uh, low pressure system moving through parts of Victoria, still some rain on the back side of it in the southern parts of Victoria, but definitely some cooler temperatures now for the uh, southwestern coast of Victoria, and a secondary front as well blowing up between Wagga Wagga and Canberra, but again, nothing too severe in those thunder cells. But yeah, it was a wild night for a lot of locations across New South Wales, especially central and specifically the northeastern parts of the state. Some very decent thunderstorms were reported. It was fantastic to see. It was a very interesting night indeed. 
And thankfully, it was, I guess, to the better end of the best case scenario that we could have had for New South Wales as well. A lot of these thunderstorms were non-dangerous. There were still a few that went, like, very dangerous and wildly severe with the large hailstones, the torrential rainfall and destructive winds. But for the most part, these storms were just stock standard and pretty tame across a lot of New South Wales. Exactly it has forecasted. It was a fantastic job by the forecast models. The Bureau of Meteorology also did a really good job. And I'd like to think we did a pretty good job here at this channel as well. Now, taking look at the uh, longer range forecast now we do have a few showers and storms expected to continue across parts of southeastern Queensland later on this afternoon and evening conditions are going to be nice for potentially severe thunderstorms as well along the Sunshine Coast now I know the forecast models don't really suggest anything too crazy but we're gonna have some warm temperatures across the southeast of Queensland going up to 33 in Bow Desert 32 in Brisbane 34 in Gympie it is going to be a warm one uh, especially for this time of the year and you can probably already feel it by now the humidity really starting to get uh, uh, embedded into the southeastern corner of Queensland. So I reckon along the Sunshine Coast, there is a chance of potentially severe thunderstorms at some point this afternoon and evening. Uh, however, for the most part, it looks like thunderstorms are going to remain pretty tame and even further out to Queensland as well. We will see a line of thunderstorms blow up between Longridge across towards Biloela and Edlers Void uh, along the uh, Queensland central coast and up into the Capricorna district, but we're just going to be seeing a couple of pulse thunderstorms here. Nothing too crazy, and I doubt any of these storms will go severe warm. Certainly not dangerous, that's for sure. Pretty stock standard for this time of the year. And then playing this through as well, you can see we do get a little bit of a return to the calmer conditions on Sunday. There is the slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm storm along the central Queensland coastline between Bundaberg and Mackay but when I say slight chance I mean probably single digit chances for certain locations uh, but again it is worth keeping in the back of your head they're really uh, hanging on for some rainfall there so when there is a chance of rainfall and no matter how small it is we're getting really hopeful across central parts of Queensland they do desperately need some rainfall there. Monday as well a couple of storms expected to fire up across central parts of Queensland outside of Emerald and Claremont now this is kind of a thunderstorm alley zone this is and I've come to figure that out throughout the course of this year so far we do have a lot of thunderstorms in this general area of Queensland and I've always wondered why there's significantly more thunderstorms in this area well the conditions are just perfect and you can see it here with the wind bars moving in we've got some nice wind streaming in from the Coral Sea which means we've got that warm moist air the warm dry air from inland parts of Queensland and the cool dry air from the southern parts of New South Wales and Queensland as well so this is just a perfect environment for thunderstorms to blow up this is what causes Tornado Alley in the United States and even though this is a much smaller area we can see some pretty nasty severe thunderstorms outside of the Emerald, Tambo, Rolleston sort of area. So this is a very interesting thing to have on the forecast. Potentially severe thunderstorms for Monday afternoon around that general area. And long-lived ones as well. I mean, take a look at this forecast run here. These thunderstorms stick around for a good couple of hours, moving up into the Capricorn District, about to the parallel of Mackay, before they finally peter out around the Glendon sort of area. And again, another f uh, round of showers and potentially thunderstorms possible on Tuesday afternoon, but a pretty low chance all things considered and then a couple of days of calmer conditions expected Thursday still the chance of some thunderstorms but nothing crazy and nothing really worth talking about and then Saturday next week we do have the chance of showers and thunderstorms across the central Queensland coastline but again this is more just of a heads up kind of forecast because it is a week away and a lot can change in the forecast between now and then and then later on in the weekend Sunday and Monday we do get a low pressure system slowly starting to materialize across southern parts of Queensland but again this is looking very long range into the future end of October and other forecast models have no idea what to make of this system they don't even generate one to be honest the Axis G3 has it well out to sea from the Queensland coastline so we will take this forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt beyond Friday the 25th of October which means everything we've talked about for the last 30 seconds is pretty unreliable at this time so yeah, Queensland, a couple of calm days, a couple of stormy days expected, especially this weekend and into early next week around that emerald sort of area. We will keep a close eye on things. It looks like things are going to get quite interesting, potentially severe thunderstorms on two of those nights across central parts of Queensland. Certainly is worth talking about. And even into New South Wales as well, a couple of storm days are possible throughout the course of next week. I know we've kind of over-baked New South Wales in terms of thunderstorms, but along the coast on Thursday, we could be seeing a few showers and storms here and there. But in the way of rainfall and thunder 
thunderstorms, nothing really to write home about right now, bar a weather event that could be coming through early next fortnight, Monday the 28th of October. But as we've just talked about, that is just notoriously unreliable to be looking at thunderstorms 10 days out. So we will give that a miss for a good couple of days and see what the forecast models make of it. Now, rainfall accumulations across northern parts of Australia, another very important factor of the Australian weather forecast telling us what's going on around the tropics. Far north Queensland, dry as a bone, central Queensland coastline looking like it is actually about to get some good rainfall from uh, from thunderstorms, specifically into the later parts of next week, potentially up towards 25 millimetres of the stuff, so that is good news there. And then parts of uh, tropical Queensland and then into the Northern Territory's uh, eastern half, we're looking at some decent rainfall as well, but the bulk of the rainfall remains along the western face of the Northern Territory coastline and then into the Kimberley region of WA across the tropics. Some very good falls are possible over the next 10 days, up to 100 millimetres of rainfall expected to close out October. That is very good stuff, typically uh, normal for this time of the year, but again, that is some good rainfall and it definitely does show that wet season is very, very close. Now, the real rainfall is not that far away. We have had a few storms again overnight across parts of far northern, uh, the Northern Territory outside of Darwin. You can see them here on the radar and satellite imagery. A couple of storms blowing offshore at this time. And they were they did provide some heavy falls as well earlier on this morning. And a couple of storms also expected to fire up tonight as those temperatures start to rise. But yeah, it certainly is starting to get feel very tropical across the Northern Territory and parts of WA as well uh, across the tropical north. We will touch on those temperature forecasts as well. It is that time of the year where the temperatures are not in the mid 30s, but the high 30s for much of the Northern Territory. Early 40s as you get further inland, it is hot, hot and hot. And those humidity values are sky high as well. And if you think 40 degrees with 50% uh, humidity is bad, well, try 42 around Fitzroy Crossing with that 50% humidity. It is getting warm up there as well. And it's only gonna to continue to warm up throughout the course of this week. Again stock standard for this time of the year. I'm not talking about 43 degrees Celsius temperatures across Western Australia in late October to uh, cause trouble or anything like that. That is completely standard for this time of the year. But just to give you a comparison, that's about 20 degrees warmer than what the cities are currently expecting or the major cities bar Brisbane. It's only about 15 degrees warmer than what Brisbane is currently experiencing. So it is substantially hotter than our major cities. And I guess people kind of um, overthink how warm sort of 44 or 45 is. It's not too warm for up there, but if you were to move from your um, environment over in, say, Melbourne or Sydney or something, and then go and stand in 45 degree heat, it is a new kind of heat and it is not pleasant. And I know going from 40 to 45 in Perth, that's rough. 40 is already a pretty warm day in Perth, but going to 45, I mean, that is that is a, that is a rough kind of heat. We did have it earlier on this year and it was not pleasant at all. But yeah, they just deal with it on a daily basis up in the northern parts of Western Australia. So I guess kudos to them. It is very warm indeed. But again, all the weather up there stocks standard and it's not going to be long until we start to be seeing those high 40s on the forecast. I'm very excited to start to report on some of those. We've already got temperatures going well and truly into the mid 40s but those high 40 temperatures into November where we see 47, 48 degree tops. It is going to get quite warm quite quickly up there. But yeah, that's kind of a tropical forecast and there isn't an awful lot to talk about around the weather scene in today's forecast update. So we're just going to finish it off with a look at the drought monitoring maps as well. You can see for the majority of Australia bar, a few spots that is looking pretty healthy. The soil moisture values are looking pretty good. There are a few places that definitely do need the rainfall, specifically around South Australia and across parts of Western Victoria as well. Some rainfall also necessary now across parts of Central Queensland and along the Central Queensland coastline between Bundaberg and Mackay and a couple of pockets in the southwest of Western Australia as well. A few drops of rainfall would not go astray there. So some rainfall is certainly necessary for Queensland as well. Specifically, they do desperately need a little bit of, bit of rainfall as well. But for the most part, soil moisture values across a wide expanse of Queensland do look to be above average, especially around far north Queensland. We've been talking about this for quite a while now, but we haven't talked about it for a good couple of days. With soil moisture values up towards 90%, that's much above average, especially for this time of the year. And that does mean that when the first big rainfalls come, a lot of the rainfall is just going to automatically become runoff. The beauty of the two or three months of dry weather that they get up in far north Queensland before sort of November and December when those rains set in is that it dries the place out. It gets those rivers standing still and it gets those uh, lakes and dams pretty much empty and ready for the big wet rains. Uh, but when you've got soil moisture values up towards 90%, the rivers are still flowing and the dams are still not full but getting close to full, uh, that really does create cause for concern when they do start to get those weeks where 500 or 700 millimetres 
millimeters of rainfall does come through, or God forbid, a tropical cyclone comes through and drops a, th drops a thousand millimeters in two days, which is totally possible and happens pretty much every year across at least some location in Queensland. And more often than not, it is across Queensland's far north. It is just a little bit concerning at this time. We definitely need another month of dry weather up in far north Queensland to make it more of a normal uh, soil moisture value up there and to really mitigate those risks of flash flooding straight off the bat with the wet season uh, on its way. But again, we will wait and see. I don't think that month of completely bone dry weather is going to materialize. I think the rainfall will pipe up pretty soon after November rolls through. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. The support lately has been much appreciated. Um, there's been a lot to talk about, especially yesterday with New South Wales. We have spent a full 17 minutes, I believe, talking about thunderstorms in New South Wales. So if you've got anything else that you'd like talked about in these updates, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always open to suggestions and feedback as well. But yeah, that has been all for me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. The names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them, so their support is amazing. But that is all for me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.